they all send you to sleep. Those are the gaming podcasts. Attention they can keep. They all sound the same. A good show should maintain extremes of sense and bollocks. You hope that one exists. You hope. Drawn by the good reviews you found that show at last. Welcome to the show, hello. We are the Lollacast. Bouncy ball, bouncy ball, bouncy ball. Your host is bouncy, bouncy ball, 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 ball. With an H after the second B. We're all relieved to hear that he's back with a brand new series. It's hard to carry on. When the Lollacost is gone Now he's Stitch, Dalek and Hawk It's better than it was before If they hadn't been such bitches They would still be on the show Bouncy Ball, Bouncy Ball, Bouncy Ball His name is Bouncy Bouncy ball, 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 with an H after the second B. Hello there, welcome to episode 5 of We're the Lollacourse Back in the Game. This one's called Peter Sutcliffe's Filter... Peter Sutcliffe? <laughs> Fil- P- filter... Possible. Filter Sutcliffe's Pilt Pit Pen. Peter Sutcliffe's Felt Tip Pen. Try saying that in a hurry. I tried. <laughs> it didn't work. Um, so yeah, Peter Sutcliffe was stabbed in the eye with he a was. pen. He was. Uh, I did I retract there... my earlier statement of being stabbed in the screwdriver. There is... Well, firstly, he's in prison... Now, I have seen Orange is New Black. There are workshops, so it could have happened. But he was in charge of stationery and supplies. Yeah. And the guy went in his cell and he grabbed a pen. Now, some people say it's a felt tip. Some people say it was a Parker pen, like they give away of insurance. Mm. Well, that would be nastier. That's like yeah, metal. That's the sort of thing that Michael Parkinson advertises in the telly now. Mm. And then the next year, somebody went in with a blunt knife in the oh. dinner hall and went for his other eye. Right. And uh, uh, most of it seems to be people that just want to be the guy that stabbed Peter Zuck. Yeah. So there you go. So you're wrong. I was. You idiot. Yeah. Right. Uh, so hello. Um, we're still in New and Noteworthy, which is yeah. good. Wonderful. Um, Stitcher, I am still can't understand. Okay. I can't really share it with anybody. I can just listen to myself. But I'm hoping there's somebody here who's listening. Not here. We've got Mark here, who we talked about last week. Say hello, Mark. Hello. Uh, um, so pretty much everyone who listens to it now is in one room. We're in the basement of my <laughs> shop. Yeah. So I can actually, if I do this, that's touching the floor of my shop, but I was actually punching the ceiling. Oh. Is and that if, asbestos? It probably is. Excellent. <laughs> it's, uh, if you look at the electrics boards behind you... Mark might not want to stand there anymore. No, <laughs> it's, it's quite terrifying. Um, so yeah, so thanks for listening uh, to the previous shows. We're doing really well. The audio was a lot better last week. Mm. Might be a bit echoey this week, but we are yeah. underground. We've improved our audio tenfold, so we're now going to stand in an echoey basement. Yeah, and... Uh, ooh. I need to just turn the sounds off on my iPad because I think that's my mother. Yes, it is. My bloody mother. Hi, Nathan, listening to your show. <laughs> she said, what are you doing in that basement with those two blokes? Oh. Well, <laughs> she's the one with the dungeon. Uh, <laughs> a bit of an update on Shelf of Shaq Fu, Rob. Mm. Did you see Twitter? I did. We've got it's a Sega expanding. Genesis copy of Yay. Shelf of Shaq Fu. Uh, not Shelf of Shaq, Shaq Fu. Ooh. The proper Shaq Fu. Yeah, there's so actually I'm, a game called Shelf of Shaq Fu. Not the CD, now. which I haven't listened to yet. Oh. 
because I left it on the dinner table and then went out. So your housemate's um, probably listening to it as we speak. She probably. She's listened to it and like proper feeling like Shaq. Mm. There was a video shared by the Lad Bible this week of Shaquille O'Neal. Huh. Um, he's quite a tall man. A very tall man. He's got a girlfriend who... He's extremely short. ...comes up to about his nipples. Mm. She can give him a piggyback. It is hilarious. You know Ludo mm. in Labyrinth? Yeah. It looks like that. <laughs> she was wearing high heels as well yeah. while doing it and she was just kind of like... Launched him around and then <laughs> dropped him onto his back. On my, and on they TV. couldn't get up like a turtle. She helped him up. Yeah. She's a tough woman. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so I quite like her on my shelf as well. Mm. For if I ever move out. And she's she sort of shelf sized. She really is. She really is. Um, so, yeah, so we've got Sega Genesis. Now, we shouldn't encourage people to send us any more copies of Shaq food for the shelf with Shaq. But we're going to anyway. Yeah. Um, so, if you do want to get a copy and you want to make it as easy as possible, um, what I suggest is ordering from, say, Amazon or eBay, or if you've got one in your collection, you feel free to send it to as well, because we will, it's better off with us than with you, frankly. It's, it's the game equivalent of self-harm, and we're your Samaritans. Uh, send it to my shop, which is the Entertainment Centre. You can find the address on the internet, but if not, it's 97A Norfolk Street, Wisbeach, PE13 to LD. And that's L for lemon and D for dog. It is. Well, so, yeah, if you want to do that, that's where the other two have come to. It bemuses my colleagues greatly. They don't like it because they everything we order comes in, mm. but then every now and then something I've ordered will come in. And when Shaq Foods started arriving, they don't understand, they don't understand why no. Shaq Foods are. I didn't understand <laughs> when the first one arrived. I was like, <laughs> what? Hang on. I mentioned that once on a podcast, didn't I? So I then listened back. I was like, oh, yes, yes, I did mention that. So, thank you to Shaq Zero. And Shack Zero point five mm. for sending the stuff in. There's also a Shack Zero Twitter. I saw there, that, yeah. Which I'm wondering if that is the Shack Zero, or is it someone trying to cash in on Shack Zero? I'm cashing on his fame. Mm. It's so, a parody account of the actual Shack Zero. Yeah, Shack Zero is so cool. He doesn't need a Twitter account. Yeah. But there's somebody who hasn't ever had a copy of Shack Fu who's envious and wants to be Shack Zero. Oh. So, so well done anyway, it's nice. Walking around town in an Orlando he's, magic show. He's given a lot of course an extra follower on Twitter. That's a good thing, <laughs> even if they're all the same person. Um, so, what the devil have you been up to this week, Rob? What have you been playing on your computers? Thought Manager remains an integral part of my life, as we've spoken before. Because we recorded Thursday last week, I've kind of had a short one, and I have a very mild you interview. It's called a family. You've had a short one. I had a short one. one. I know. <laughs> uh, but yes, as I said... Uh, Slightly less time than normal between recording, so my window of opportunity was smaller and uh, family Good stuff job. You had a short went along. One, it is. So yes. thought manager squeezed in there. Unfortunately, I got relegated my peach routine. So sad times there. Even with the tall man with the even ponytail. with the tall man with the ponytail and Brazilian superstar Neymar up front, my defence was the Aquaman. Neymar the Submariner. <laughs> defence just wasn't up to the task, unfortunately. So yes, I got relegated. Tapped out. Standard fare for both of us, I think. Are you, Mark, oh. you're a tapped out player? No, not oh, a tapped out one yet. So. Although I'm sure you're joining the group, I'll be interested into see, it. Yeah, see. So, yeah. tapped out remains. You'll be tapped out. I'm enjoying that. <laughs> I think what you said last week was right. It's it's nice to have a quest line with Mr. Burns and the power station, which is, you can take your time. Yeah. You're not time pressured. it ties into an actual episode, it does. which yeah. I like. You're I not like time pressured to tap little elves, no. fire cannons within two hours, because that was, well, we discussed it before. No, it and I think that's the thing. Is it should be a casual game. And when a casual game suddenly becomes a mad rush. I mean, over Christmas it as well, the fun. to have a time limit over Christmas when people don't want to be sat on their tablets in a front room when there's booze and mince pies. Mm. Like, uh, even me, sitting alone on Christmas, because mm. I didn't have my children at home. <laughs> I still didn't play the computer. Yeah. I was, I ended up at my sister's house, and I we had cock. Oh, that? Cockerel. Oh. Um, instead of turkey. Oh, it was better than turkey. Mm. I say scrap the turkey. Yeah. I think Bernard Matthews just wants turkey to be eaten at Christmas. Is it like he's got a surplus at the end of the year or something? I think what he's doing is he's built a lot of turkey farms. Yeah. and Supply and demand isn't quite worth it. Well, he's generated it. demand by saying, well, you only eat this one month a year unless you have turkey drummers. That's not fair. No, he sent that boat to America so they'd eat it twice a year to try and help get rid of the surplus. That wasn't Bernard Matthews. Yeah. That was Christopher Columbus. <sighs> Those guys are too confused. Yeah, they are, they are very similar. Um, Columbus so was from Swatham. So. What's this about Trivial Pursuit? I'm guessing thinking that Bernard Matthews was Christopher Columbus, you probably didn't win the game. Well, actually, I did. It's uh, it, We had a games night at a friend's house on Saturday, a uh, game of poker, and then we played Trivial Pursuit Bet You Know It, which is right. a twist on the classic Trivial Pursuit, where the other players in the game bet on whether they think you'll answer the question correctly. 
So do you win by knowing if everybody else is clever as opposed to being clever yourself? You still have to, you still Can get you your... Hustle, do you hustle people? Like go, oh, oh I'm terrible at sport, and then they all bet against you, and you then go, ha I know that well, Peter theoretic- Crouch is the best cricket player in Wolverhampton. <laughs> <laughs> Theoretically, you could, because if they bet, say they bet you will answer the question wrong, and right. you answer it correctly, you get the money they bet. So you build up your own stack, and you can buy the wedges. So if you don't fancy trying to answer a geography question, you can say, well, I've got enough coins now, I'll buy the little blue segment. Okay, so if lots of people bet against you, mm-hmm. to uh, say that you've got to get it right, you could just deliberately get it wrong. Mm, I don't think it quite works like that. I think you actually have to answer the question correctly rather than it. If they if, so if they, they say you'll get it right, if I remember yeah. the rules rightly, I was very intoxicated. I'm getting if, that, yeah. If they say you'll get it right and you get it wrong, the money is lost. It's only if they think you get it wrong and you get it right that you win the money. Right. So do they get their own money back if you get it right? If, Who gets the money if you get it right? If they bet the correct way, yeah. they get their original bet back plus the same again from the bank. So if they say... One oh, so coin, there's a bank. Yes. Right. So okay. if they that say you'll get the question wrong and they bet one coin and you do get it wrong, they will get their original coin back plus another one from the bank. If they okay. get five coins, they get their original five. Is five. this game an expensive game? Have you researched it so we can recommend it? I haven't, unfortunately. Oh, because crying out I know. loud. Right. Tell this us about... You, this is what you get for sending me <laughs> you tell the, us... the agenda while I'm at work. I've got no in the busiest period. Of course I've got an internet connection. I'm underground. Yeah. Um, well, we'll, look a, we'll look into that. Oh, we've got oh. M- Mark's on it. Mark's standing with the door so he gets the one bar of signal for <laughs> yeah. the entire room. Well, he's plugged into the main, so <laughs> yeah, it's literally he's got all the wiring. He, he personally is plugged into and the And poker. Main. So it's a lot of gambling and alcohol. Yeah, but I won. You won both? Mm, I did. Did you actually win real money? Yes. How five real five pound buying for poker. Yeah. Then we split it between the top three. Twenty pounds for the winner. Oh no, fifteen for the winner. Me. That's good. Ten for second, five for third, which happens to be my partner Emma. So I walked away with a twenty pound note. So is that is why I've been able to buy some new microphone stands. Yes. Hey, gambling is good. It is, despite what the Christians say. Wow. So, um, and this, what's this? You've got a copy of Far Cry Four. I have. You thought you just mentioned you've got a copy? Yeah, pretty much. Not played it. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd been a bit quiet this week because it was a gaming podcast, so and I've only played. Up. I've only played one I, iOS I, game. I touched the game. This week, does that count? <laughs> so I hadn't done a lot of my gaming front, so I thought I'd throw that in there. But I have actually got a game. To I've play. got the I special, promise. This I've gaming got the special podcast edition gaming. box for Far Cry Four Ooh. with the figure. Um, packing them in on the elephant throne, mm. stuff like that. Uh, it's rubbish. Well, the box you got game. it Yes, sir. Figure's pretty poor, isn't it? Yeah, not as good as Vass from the last one. And it's not as good as um, the because it's from Ubisoft Collectibles. I wanted it to be on the same sort of scale, at least, as the Assassin's Creed ones, which are bigger, substantial. <laughs> yeah. I think I sent you. I know oh, you see it. Oh, mm, I've I seen them. Yeah. Um, so I did take a picture and send it to my friend. And he was like, "Oh, I want to get that." And I kind of put it in. Pagamin is the size of an assassin's leg. And <laughs> that doesn't seem real to me. Mm. I mean, the fact that you sat on a thing. I like the little drawer at the back. True. Did, what motto did you get in yours? I got um, a mortar is worth a thousand bullets. True. In so, <laughs> or in, in Tibet. When I buy my mortars, bullets. they often charge me 1,000 bullets. So. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, well, I hope one day you'll play it. And then we can actually talk about it. <laughs> or maybe it can just be Football Manager tapped out and I've still got that copy of Far Cry yeah. 4. Um, don't don't well, spoil episode 6 for the people. No. <laughs> okay, well I've been playing more XCOM and a move in. <laughs> Is it Chris? I me for only playing that Football Manager. Uh, no, well I've, I've played different things on this. I'm really enjoying it still. Uh, I played six hours of it the other day and I thought I'd only been sat there for 20 minutes. Just lost it completely. I've, pl- I've restarted twice over as well. Because I forgot the first time to name everybody after my children, which I normally do, <laughs> because that way if they die... Your well, children died. I send my eldest out first, because he's 13, <laughs> frankly stinks and he's annoying. So he can get to the front and be a target. I've met, given him a pink moustache and pink armour. <laughs> he's the, he's basically the bullet sponge. Yeah. So I've built him up like defence-wise. He goes out. Then my daughter's a sniper, and my youngest... True to him is just like a tank on legs. Mm. So he's got rocket launchers and machine guns and things. Then I built my girlfriend yep. as well. And she, <laughs> because she's quite short, mm. she's also a tank on legs because she could beat me up easily. She might um, tell this the wrong way. She could give Chuck and Leon a piggyback mm. easily. Uh, so they, they got built. But then there was a mission where you get a guy who's got this kind of artifact thing. Okay. And I was mucking about. And I was saying, I'm going to get killed. And they got killed. And they went, 
we could have done with that. I was like, oh. Can we start again then? <laughs> <Shouldn't have worked laughs> about. But I don't mind. I could restart that game every day. Yeah. Wouldn't care. It's it's a fantastic game. Um, Thomas Was Alone, which I played last week. Yes. And then wrote an article about. I did. It was lovely. Which is on. Oh, thank you, Rob. That's very kind of you. Uh, it has been shared around quite a bit. Mike Biffle himself hasn't got back to me. Oh, but then oh, I didn't expect well. him to get back to me when I basically said I've written a better game than Mike Biffle. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Interestingly, I didn't realise there's. Um, Benjamin's Flight was added as free DLC to most of the versions. Mm. It's in the Xbox One version. Now, I haven't played this, okay. so I've played that now. Not now, but then. Not right now, yeah. We've got a and uh, uh, you play Benjamin. Uh-huh. Um, have you played Tours of I haven't, but I've seen it. Yeah, there's basically a character you meet at one point. She's got a double jump. It's very useful. It's her before the events of Thomas was alone okay. meeting a guy called Benjamin who's testing a jetpack which is kind of Daedalus and Icarus storyline mm-hmm. where the kid's excited and the father's saying don't take the jetpack out yep. and he's like but it's a jetpack Whoa, off we go flying around and um, there's a mention in the first game that's a, car- a blind square mm. and it's how he gets blinded okay. not brilliant uh, it's not as challenging as the later levels of the game I think sometimes with DLC you, it it's nice to tell another story, but it felt like it had stepped back in difficulty. So it didn't pose much of a challenge. Didn't challenge you in the same way. And the story wasn't as interesting because it wasn't anything really to do with yeah. the main story. Okay. But for what's included for free, and I think every version of the game now contains it for free, they haven't charged for it. There's no achievements or trophies. Mm. Or so it's nice when, when people do things like that, whether they're big yeah. or small, when they add this little bit of extra. I like the fact that like somebody like might have said, nice. yeah, you might, your game. Mm. It's all right, but uh, there's no properly disabled people in there, and there's no jetpacks. Mm. So he gives one jetpack and then blinds him. Well, so I write a whole article saying mm. why have we got no. He gives us the one hand, take away with the other, yeah. and then suddenly there's a blind one. Mm. But they don't do blindness very well. Yeah. Instead of, uh, if for me, I'd have had a screen completely black, right? And have you use the jetpack, and you'd feel the bumps when you hit an object, so you can then okay. navigate. The, so you've the area. got. The feedback in the control. Yeah, so if you go too fast, I mean, like jumping up now, I can mm. go and bang my head. Yeah. I would have liked to have had the completely black screen and use that to navigate a maze. Mm. And there is a maze you've got to get through. Yeah. But that would have been brilliant if that was just a black screen. So I would have done that, Mike. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> what of it? Yeah. <laughs> so while I was on DLC, uh, I then looked at Peggle 2 because I'm still trying to chase that achievement score mm-hmm. thing. Yep. Uh, I was warned to stay away from the Master Chief collection because it's got. 500 achievements Wow! with 1,250 achievements per Halo game and then most of them are five point achievements yeah. so I was like well fair enough I mean I will get it and I will play those games mm. to death but probably wait till next year or if they give ODST away for everybody because I'm a bit annoyed I didn't buy it because the game was buggy as hell it was yeah and then as an apology they said well all you people who suffered through that you'll get ODST for free but everybody else will have to, may have to pay for it or might not get it at all and I'm like, see, I thought I didn't they'd actually it. fully announce it as a DLC. Regardless whether you got it free or paid, I thought they, that had been announced it's, and it would be DLC. It seems a bit sketchy because it's not even anywhere near ready. Okay. They've just said it is coming at some point. Yep. But originally that was never going to happen. It was only going to be the Master mm. Chief games. So it's almost like they kind of thought, oh, the game's gone a bit wrong. We've still got that ODST code <laughs> over there. Polish that up. What's Nathan <laughs> Fillion doing? Get it him in here. matter if it takes dialogue. another year. It won't matter as long as at some point we give it away for yeah. free. And I don't like that. I don't like the fact that if you're in at the beginning, I mean, obviously, if you're in at the beginning of the game, inherently you take the risk that there might be a bug in there. Yeah. And obviously matchmaking bugs are awful in a multiplayer shooter. But then to say to people who, quite wisely, at a time when there's a lot of games coming out, say, well, yeah, but you didn't buy it, so you don't get the yeah. free stuff. Like, I've bought every Halo game. I've got collector's versions mm. of them. I'm a big Halo fan. But I'm going to stay away from a game that I'm not going to enjoy. Yeah. Because that would ruin the experience for me. So I didn't stay away from it because I don't support uh, three, four, three rather. But yeah, well, yeah, I don't. It's not not because I don't like Halo. It's because I do like Halo. I don't want to play a broken Halo. Yeah. But, the saddest part of that entire comment was when you said buy new games. You sometimes accept there are bugs in them because that's how we are now. You can accept oh, yeah. it might have a bug in it these days. Well, do you know what? I was talking the other day to the guy. We were saying about how consoles these days will always be going wrong. But like he tried to trade in. <laughs> An old, <laughs> original arcade. Yeah. 
And I said, if you took that game, because it hasn't got HDMI port on it, they won't take, mm. take it at all. That's their way of dating the consoles. Even though on the back of the console, there's a sticker with the date on it. Mm. So for game, it's like, well, we hire some right idiots. <laughs> so what we've given them is HDMI. If they can't plug that in, they can't take it. <laughs> Um, I'm not saying games head office can't easy. handle the idea of a scat lead. Like, what it's, the fuck is this? It's very bizarre. Like, just that's the yeah. way they date them. They don't just look at the manufacturing date. They go, well, "How's it going to do my? Not good enough. <laughs> it's um, not real." So I said, "Yeah, I'll, I'll happily take it, yeah. but I can't give you a huge amount for it because the risk of a seven-year-old machine." Yeah, you know. But if it had walked in with a Sega Mega Drive, I'd have got my white spirits out, a cotton bud, cleaned the connection points, and I know almost ninety-nine percent. As long as the two cables that plug in the back are fine, mm. that will be fine. There won't be much that can go wrong. Yeah. And it was like, but then there were games that on the spectrum where you'd get to one, you couldn't finish it. Yeah. They were they were broken. They were buggy. There was nothing they could do. They couldn't patch it. Mm. So now you're at a point where we're lucky enough to have patches post release, but it's also kind of forced developers to somewhat think, well, let's not beta test it. Yeah. Let's just release it and see what shows yeah. up. But I always argue like if you've got a game the size of Skyrim, you can't quality control that mm. it's impossible you've got to walk on every single inch of the map cast every single spell do every single character animation do everything mm. everywhere before you know there's no bug but Skyrim wasn't that massively buggy compared to the problems I've had with the Master Chief Collection which fell down at one of its most fundamental points with matchmaking because oh, yeah, yeah. why do people buy Halo multiplayer but then that's right? the other thing is don't gesture to Mark no. to get your like support and I've got nobody <laughs> apart from a post of the Little Mermaid Somebody's 2 Somebody's written LFC on the wall over there yeah you? that was behind some panelling as well which is falling down this box here that, that was what they sent us to actually pack up blockbusters when we were closing that down. one box oh well there was more of it oh right <laughs> well, did <laughs> they say Netflix on the side Netflix, Netflix yeah. <laughs> no it meant love films <laughs> <to> Huntingdon <laughs> it Huntingdon so um, yeah now for me like it's the same problem they had with Assassin's Creed Unity it wasn't a problem until they put it online. Mm. Like, if you test it on servers yourself, that's not the same as actually having it released mm. online. So it's kind of difficult to test something like that. You can stress test, but you don't know how matchmaking is going to work when you've suddenly got, will it be able to read people's progress? Will it take this in? What happens when these amount of players go on? What happens if this doesn't, if people have installed some of it and not all of it, what, what will happen there and here? And it is difficult, and I do make allowances for it, but then I do get very disappointed when they go, yeah, but you can't have the free DLC because you didn't buy immediately. Yeah. Like, All right. Sorry, you're not the you're not um, CD Projekt Red just mm. giving me DLC for being awesome and just buying your bloody game. Yeah. Do you feel 14 the, pieces. Do you feel the same way about Destiny? Because if you bought it by a certain point, you got the free upgrade. Oh, to the, to the next gen? Yeah. Well, I got it on the next gen. Well, yeah, so you, for me... Does the principle apply? Because obviously I'm still 360 at this point. Yeah, well, I don't know what it's like to be a poor person, Rob. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> superstar. No, I, I, do you know, I was talking... Because we've got upstairs, I don't know if yeah. you saw it, the limited edition PS4 copy. Yep. Yeah. It's out there. Now, my girlfriend's son, he's mm -hmm. really into Destiny on a PS3 and isn't going to get a PS4 anytime soon. Doesn't need one. Mm -hmm. He's only 10. And uh, I was thinking, well, actually, that's DLC content. That's season pass. Yeah. Is that just a Sony season pass, or is it specifically PS4? Mm. And everything I looked at, if it was the PS3 limited edition, you could go up to PS4 for free. Yeah. But if you've got the PS4, you can't have the same purchase mm. work, even though essentially the system knows you bought the season, the season pass. pass yeah. yeah. And it and I just found out a bit annoying that, like, I was worried that I couldn't take my character onto the 360 version. Yeah. So I would like to be able to kind of bridge the gap. It's kind of this weird, strange crossover going on. Yeah. So, no, I mean, it hasn't bothered me too much. I, I, it was a limited offer because by now it's a lot cheaper. Mm. So if somebody's paid 40 quid for it on one console and then later wants to get on it, that's the same as buying two copies of 20 quid mm. as far as I'm concerned. But, yeah. The second-hand money, that doesn't go to Bungie or Activision. That goes well, to yourself no. as a retailer. It, but the, um, the upgrade offer was only for a digital version anyway. True, but... So surely that's the point, though, because it, it had a certain cost. But you then pay £57 for something that's £40, so they've got their extra yeah. 20 quid. Well, yeah, the, <laughs> really? you know, well, we've talked about online pricing yeah. for the, the Xbox market basically before. So what we, talk, <laughs> well, so we talk about downloads, uh, I also played DLC for Peckle, too, because yeah. uh, I noticed I hadn't got quite 42% on Peckle, mm. and I bought the DLC for it, but hadn't finished it. And the reason was, when I bought it, 
I thought, oh, that's great. He's just give me some new characters to play with. Hadn't realised that along there's like a line of missions you can flick through. Mm-hmm. If you get DLC, you have to pull down to go to your DLC characters, and then their missions are on a separate track, which is just stupid. There should be a big flashing arrow saying push down because there's awesome things Ooh, like that. One of the missions is a trial. You've got the um, the hamster from the first peggle who does okay. the multi ball. Okay. He now does a multi ball that sends three out. Um, like the, there's a whole row. It's like 150 pegs. Mm-hmm. The top row is all the power up. Right. You get one shot to wipe out all of them. It's peggle beauty. It's <laughs> peggle porn, Rob. I sat there <laughs> and I fired the first ball off. This is why we have the explicit tag on the podcast. Very, very quickly, undid my belt, whip my trousers down, and, and fired another ball off. <laughs> I raced it to see which one would end up in the pot first. <laughs> It won, oh. but oh, it was glorious. I watched it. I, I did that mission over and over again because it was just so joyous. And then for the, the fairy owl thing, there's a mission where, you know, I'm if you shoot onto a curve, you can do a circle. Yeah. They have two spirals like that. And this one gives you loads of power-ups and this one's all the orange ones. Okay. So you fire that one, you get that really satisfying, da da and it drops. And this one, it's like, ba 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 Eight million points for one shot. Beautiful. Oh, Ooh. it was like when you do really well on Geometry Wars, mm. and you're just sitting there and you're thinking, "Yeah." There is a certain beauty in those high score games. Do you remember yeah. the club on the 360? Yes, which yeah. is basically a very short run through the levels. It was Tony shoot Hawk's the shooter, head, pretty yeah. much. Yeah, just but there was a certain that. beauty to that high score type yeah. game where you just literally right. This is my high score. Play it's a beat bloody them. ugly beat game them. now if you go back to it. Oh, yeah. I, I went back it. to it recently. It's, it's, a yeah, it's not, not held up well. Game. But it was a great fun for that one month before something else came out. Yeah. Which, I mean, I, really think, I think that the club really led to Bulletstorm. Yeah. Bulletstorm carries yeah. a lot of what the club that was. That style whole idea of, of chaining together the kills and things. Mm. Yeah. Which was in Vanquish? Yeah, that was Vanquish. Yeah. yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That was a similar-ish thing. Yeah, that, well, platinum, that's, that's platinum games, yes, that's all kind of, that's their sort of mm. area. But, yeah, I mean, but... Bulletstorm was confusing to people, because they were like, they people who played Gears of War weren't used to rapidly going yeah. around and changing things and being awesome. Mm. And this is like saying, <laughs> play, play a shooter like you would play Devil May Cry. Yeah. That's what it was trying to say. It and, was run and gun. And I love Bulletstorm so much. It it deserves a sequel. Mm. I'm I'm disappointed that we haven't had one yet. I'd rather, I'd rather have that before a new gears. Um, I can see, I can see an argument because I think that would really. Sit. I mean, Sunset Overdrive has shown that there's a, a gap for that kind yeah. of game. Yeah. But the problem with Sunset Overdrive is hasn't there always been a gap for that kind of game? Because Crackdown was not this. Same. It wasn't quite the same style. There's never a, but a lot of people enjoy that for it, kind of run and gun. I there's suppose, always, it's always yeah. like they come out and you go, oh, why have we never had this sort mm. of game for a while? There's always a ground for things. It goes like away. And you don't think about it for a while, yeah. and then you'll suddenly go, hang on, I really like that game. Mm. Oh, I'm more of that game again. And it's weird, you get that sometimes. Like, there are some games that just come out every year. Yeah. And, and I don't just mean like a FIFA or a Call of Duty, but you'll get a, a brown first person mm. shooter. You'll always get one. Yeah. Doesn't matter who's made Mirror's it. Edge, Mirror's one. Edge is probably a good example. It's not a brown first person shooter. No, 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 but I meant as a game that just came out one year. Everybody loved it. They might get a SSX might did it when it came out a while ago, the re release. Yeah. yeah. The momentum, so, the. Yeah. yeah. There's all this thing, and then, it, then they disappear. And yeah. it's, and all you need is, and, and this is where. Like you were saying with the high score run, mm. having that friends list, having that option, and the Xbox mm. One. I mean, you, the Xbox Three Sixty does it well. The Xbox One absolutely pushes yeah. the competition thing. There's a, a moment on the. Um, are you on the early access? Yes. Thing. So I don't know whether it's gone that to everybody. I think it has now. But like the achievement leaderboard. Yes, it came out last month. Yeah. Or December, I think. Essentially, what it does, it counts how many achievements you got in the last 30 days. Okay. Top of the list. Bouncing. Across all the <laughs> yeah. yeah. way really of, on the side. way of waving his virtual willy around. I'm yeah. tenth yeah. on the top. Going, wee, wee, the guy wee. on the top of my list has had 4,500 games score in a month. Which is crazy. I mean, it makes me feel... Like, oh, what? <laughs> what are you your life, mate? <laughs> like, I, I finished the whole of Thomas was Alone in a week, which is a thousand points. Yeah. And that's pushed me back up again. But this guy is like a machine. He must just... I don't think but he is, works. Is he just nailing the shitty games like Avatar? Well, this is the thing. Like, he just pushed B's I've done minutes, that. Incredible. I've been... I've done all the easy yeah, stuff. So now guy. what's left is the games that I'm actually buying and yeah. playing. And so now it's actually a, a real good challenge to sort of go and push mm. a bit harder. But that leaderboard is great. And then... But you then got them for... Of the games, so they've added the thing in the new update, which hasn't gone out to everybody, but it's called Game Hubs. Okay. So, say you've got Destiny, you'll mm-hmm. push 
like the menu button thing, and it will give you the option for the game hub. It will allow you to look at what achievements there are, what the score is, but it also go like how many war chiefs, not war chiefs, that's Mordor, but how many vanguard people you've killed. Not okay. vanguards. They're Whatever things. monsters you yeah. whatever you want to kill. Yeah. The, the fallen or, not the brutes, or, that's Halo. Yeah, fallen, fallen. or uh, Yeah, whatever. Or, it'll say Vex. how many of these you well, killed yeah. and then I'll just have your friends underneath. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the Mordor one and I've killed one less war chief mm -hmm. than my friend. Okay. And two less than the friend of him, and then I'm number one. So, so I'm now I've on. installed that game again just to put in to go and kill two war, three war it's chiefs. A bit and then take it off again. What Raptor tried to do in a sense. It's exactly what Raptor tried to do. And if Microsoft can get it so that all that data is shared online really well, it'll be fantastic. Yeah. And obviously, the Windows 10, which we'll get to in a bit, that's going to start really, really pulling it in. together. Because um, you kind of see that, as we said, Raptor and in pockets, you see it already because Destiny oh, can move, we can, your website. Yeah, we can move on to Windows yeah. 10 next. That's actually yeah. next thing I'm order. But basically, obviously, the big announcements have come through about Windows 10. They've skipped Windows 9, which I think is because they don't like the Germans. Um, <laughs> Because Windows, no, that's what yeah. everybody says every year. So, frankly, the Germans ruined it for the rest of us. We can't now have a sequential number of release. Yeah. Generally. Well, at least they can't, they can't have Nazi things in there. It's Wolfenstein games. Take that, Germany. <laughs> um, frankly, they, they ruined it for themselves by waving them all that time. Yeah. But that wasn't the Germans. That was the Nazis and their supporters and the frightened yeah. people of Germany. And Germany's a fine, fine country. I spent a lot of time in Dortmund. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's a very nice place. Sorry, Germany. Do not invade us, even though you could if you wanted to. Uh, so Windows 10, the big feature for us yep. is the cross-platform yes. gaming, which we've seen in Shadowrun, mm. or Shadowrun Returns, specifically. And never saw again. Yeah, or Shadowrun. Yeah, with Shadowrun. Just, no, just, no, just, no, Shadowrun just Returns Shadowrun. is the yeah, remake of Shadowrun. Shadowrun. Yeah. And, uh, and it was all right, but it was hurt by the fact that Games Windows Live was an aberration. Mm. So now, Xbox Gaming on laptop you can stream your xbox to your pc yeah i wish it could be the other way around. they're working on that yeah mm. i want to be able to stream it, it, at best i want to stream my steam games to my 360 to that would never happen no but but i would might as well stream it. your ps4 games in that will not happen <laughs> I, I, would, I would love it but you know either way mm. as it is we've got fable legends coming yes. that's the big first game that's mm. been announced and i was I, I will happily say fable legends I love the Fable games. I do. You're going to talk about one in a bit. I am. So we won't spoil that. But even Fable the Journey, mm. while we're talking about Connect, it wasn't a good game as a Fable game. And that kind of led me to think that, because then they had Fable Heroes as yep. an arcade game. wasn't a good Fable game. No. It wasn't really a good game at all. And then Fable Heroes comes along and it's like, oh, here, yeah, look, these four people versus this one. It was like, well, it's putting one person in the role of like the director in Left mm. 4 Dead. You can send enemies evolve. towards through and evolve, yeah. yeah. And um, and I was like, oh, I don't know. The, the arena seemed quite small, and I don't really see the point of it. It's not, yeah. It doesn't feel like Fable. Fable for me was always an adventure, a big adventure. Exploration. And, yeah. yeah. And now they've sort of announced officially Windows 10 support mm. and, and the cross-play between the two. Firstly, being the bad guy makes a lot of sense because it plays like Dungeon Keeper, which shockingly, listeners, Mark has never even heard of, let alone play. <laughs> I've been shamed. But, um, I've been we, shamed. We will sort that out as soon as possible. I've got a copy that he can I'm play. always quite surprised when those old Bullfrog games haven't found their way onto one of the console marketplaces. Well, and obviously, Thing Hospital was free on Origin. Origin and good old games. Of I'm kind of surprised they haven't thing. because there must be a way to adapt it to using the controller. It's, or even just with, I mean, you imagine using the um, Smart Glass. Mm. You can there use you drag and touch Perfect, controls yeah. and stuff like Perfect that. Example. And the Surface tablets, mm. I mean, again, would work really well. But I think a lot of it is more down to the fact that licensing is a bit tricky because obviously EA yeah. and Microsoft are sort of holding it. So EA mm. hold the license of the games, but Microsoft own the people that made the games. Yeah. So which way they go. But, you know, War for the Overworld, as I was saying to Mark earlier, is on the way, and that is pretty much Dungeon mm. Keeper 3. So... Uh, that's good. Although it's not. They don't like it when you say that. They're massive fans of Dungeon Keeper. It was a fan game, basically. Mm. and uh, But they do kind of get a bit resentful. It's like, well, we put like four years into this. Stop <laughs> calling it Dungeon Keeper 3. This is our game. We got fed up of waiting for EA to release one. So mm. we kind of made our own. So we made our own Dungeon Jack Keeper 3. Games. I mean, <laughs> no, not Dungeon <laughs> Keeper 3. No, that's it. So now I'm like totally into the idea of Fable Legends. Mm. I, I really want it. I, I signed up for the beta before I didn't get in. 
but I didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. same. And now I want that beta badly. Yeah. I've signed up with seven different email addresses. <laughs> I think the thing that sold it short was they just they were up front. They were straight. They told you what the game was. There mm. was no crazy mono new promises, no. which mm. every time were fable. Although, that's what hypes the fable. Did you see on that trailer? It's like it does this. It does that. Three yeah. mono new clones. <laughs> they were like, it was like the thing with fable. Is it's all about choices and, it was, and an adventure <laughs> and being there as a team. And it was like, and then there was the guy with the big beard. I don't know if you've seen the, t- the trailer. Oh, I haven't seen it. There's yeah. a massive, a guy with a massive beard. And they're all saying, like, which character in the game is yeah. there. And they go, well, I'm the bad guy, obviously. <laughs> so, well, hang on, beards don't mean bad guy. I mean, the master had a beard mm. and Gandalf had a beard. He was a good guy. Yes. But Saruman also had a beard. Had a beard. Mm. You've and, had a beard. And, and, and Saruman was a good We're guy. We're all a bit hairy. Yeah. Is well, this that, an evil podcast? Win, well, pretty much. It's yeah. definitely an evil podcast. It's called <laughs> Holocaust. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's already, I mean, on, on what is a Holocaust Awareness Day. Yeah. And we're recording, we're recording a podcast today. in a, in a in kind a of gas basement. filled basement. It's yeah. a bit worrying. Yeah. Do, do, obviously, if it does start to smell a bit much, do get out. Uh, yeah. There's a pipe there that does leak sometimes. Yeah. So if you notice it, I can't smell it. But if you do, do. If you do, do, do. Yeah. Don't worry <laughs> about upsetting the podcast. I don't want us all to die down here. Okay. I have got a light. Can, can you edit the bit out where we die? Yeah. Well, I won't be able to edit it. I'll be dead. Oh, God. Oh, You've got no released. commitment to this podcast. It won't be released, though, so it'll be fine. Oh, ah, they'll, just, they'll find your MacBook and they'll upload yeah. it. And it'll be like the Blair Witch Project for podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> it's with Dr. Hamhock in a radioactive suit coming down here. Like, I've died oh. on more podcasts than I have died in real life, so, <laughs> you know, oh. not many people can say that. That's, that's a, that's a kill death ratio if ever there was one. So, yeah, so this whole kind of crossplay thing, I'm, I'm loving it. And I'm thinking. If I look at things like Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, which works really well on PC, yeah. it works really well on it. On so, Yeah, being able to play with mm. more people. And and just having that ease where it's just it, they just talk to each other. They're mm. built on the base, the same sort of software base. So yeah. it's going to be incredibly easy to just go, well, there's a server, shoom, straight on. Yeah. And what I like about it is now that we're at a point where console gamers have really settled into playing these games like a proper pro gamer sort of style yeah and pc gaming is or gamers they've evolved to play theirs their way yeah it is properly now a level playing field in terms mm. of they're not being forced to come onto a console where they're not very good with mm. the controller we're not having to go on to pc like i remember playing team fortress 2 yeah on pc i've just been awful at it so. yeah but playing friends who've got it on a pc on the 360 version and absolutely destroying them it's a level playing field yeah it was now mm. but do you think it will not be the the issue of you will still have the the mouse and keyboard versus controller problem with FPS is like this is co-op versus one it's not when you're going to PvP it's not the same like Portal when they did yeah. it PlayStation I think PC it was co-op again personally I think now I think the, the playing field is a lot more advanced because a lot of games are squad based now rather than just 1v PvP sure you can get the button configuration right for the controller to make it easy to switch between weapons use I grenades. still think it doesn't matter how good you are with a controller if you've got someone with Similar skill with to a mouse fair, and keyboard. You, you play them on a, a first-person shooter. Like you give a ten-year-old American kid a controller, they'll destroy everyone. It's just not fair. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, just, what it is. it's just some people are better than us. It's lag. It's the lag. All right. It's the lag in the internet. All right. ADHD. <laughs> Um, right, so yeah, so that's all. That's all good, mm. and hopefully, for Heroes, heroes, one of us will get into or all of us. Yeah, well, hopefully, it'll be a good one to. Got the console. Oh yeah, hopefully by then. Oh, Rob yeah. can watch. We can go around my house and play. Mm. That'd be fine. Uh, now, four in February, Rob. Yes. We were going to talk about this last week. We did. But we sort oh, of we ran over time. We did. And then my housemate came home, mm. and I felt a bit guilty about sitting in the kitchen while she'd come back from a 14-hour work shift, mm. and I was just talking about February, yeah. when she can't even have a sandwich. So, you are aware of four in February. Mm. You know what it is. I think so. Have you ever participated before? Never. So you're a four in February virgin. I am. Excellent. What about you, Mark? You I am unaware, so maybe me and the listeners okay. would like to be informed. So February has 28 days, exactly four weeks. Most gamers have got a pile of games they've never really played properly. True. And there's not many games coming out in a February. Mm. In any February. Not just this February. Any February. <laughs> it's just <laughs> generally quite time. Yeah. So this is a perfect opportunity to play four games that are either in a pile of shame or you've downloaded and never really played. Now, for me, I'm... I haven't played past the first checkpoint of Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. So I'm going to play the single player of that. Just blitz yep. That'll be a couple of days. That's an easy start. A couple of days. 
It's like a six hour game. <laughs> It'll take me a couple of days. I'm a very yes, good Yes, get a pork pie. That's the way. You, sit wait, down, he's like, I didn't get you wait till you hear ah. what Rob's spot on his list. You can tell he's not done for and forever before. <laughs> Um, you can also tell I have a job and a family. <laughs> <laughs> Not from what you've written, it doesn't. Uh, Valiant Hearts, the download all get World War One game. Is the aim to have completed these bef- by completed the end of Completed it by the end of February. So Ooh. if you set like a, a week each. Yeah. So like the idea of Advanced Warfare, that's my, yep. that's get out of the way. That's a week it, max. Yeah. So hopefully first weekend, that's out of the way. Then I've got an extra few days because I've added, I've tried to balance it out. I've done this for three years now, so I'm kind of a bit of a veteran when it comes to it. It's in Valiant Hearts, downloadable game, pretty straightforward. I played the first kind of section, I think I'm a fifth of the way through. That took me about three hours, so there's probably about eight hours left. Um, really love it, but I've never given it the time it deserves. It's a game that's at a pace that when I'm only dipping in for ten minutes at a time, it's just not going to work. So that's on the list. New Super Mario Brothers Wii U, because I haven't played it at all. The kids have played it and finished it, but I haven't. And I find that, frankly, embarrassing. <laughs> my, <laughs> my six-year-old has finished a Mario game that I haven't. And then Lego Batman 3, the next Xbox One. Now, the Lego, Lego games are getting bigger and bigger, mm, and Lego Batman 3 is very big. Yes. So that yeah, is big. the challenging one. That's the one that... But the thing is, I want a game that when the kids are around, they could drop in on co-op. So I can still be doing my 4 in February, but spending time with them as well. So I had to put a family title on there. So it was either Skylanders Trap Team or... Lego Batman. Lego I like Batman. The, the, the idea of children sit and watch Dad play Advanced Warfare. <laughs> he <laughs> plays <laughs> the battery pack out of there, controlling it. <laughs> it's two player, you're playing. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You're controlling the left hand. Yeah, yeah. they're not watching the Advanced Warfare. <laughs> I did when... Um, I've told this story years ago. I don't know where it was on Lollipost or what it was. But when my eldest was about seven... Burnout Paradise came out, and uh, I, and I could have been Burnout Paradise because it was split screen. We were playing it on, so it must have been Burnout Revenge. Yeah. And we were playing on split screen, and I would just go, "Hey, hey, hey, watch this!" <laughs> Ran me off the road. He'd spiral <laughs> off. His face would drop, and I'd just go, <laughs> "Oh, the amount of comment!" I'd, I'd break, wait for him to go past me, then ram him off the road again. He never learned. Never yeah. learned. It was great. Um, so yeah, so Lego Batman Three is the family time game. New Super Mario Brothers. They think I've finished it, so I don't want them knowing I haven't finished it. So then when I finished it, because oh, I was like, yeah. What did you think of the ending, Dad? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, well, they haven't asked yeah, me that. The plot all came together, and it just didn't. Like, every now and then, they'll yeah. say, what do I do here? Oh, and I'll say, Sonic ran in. <laughs> <laughs> I've looked at it, and I've said, oh, you obviously you do that. And they've thought, oh, he's obviously finished it. So I've not said anything. They've not said anything. I need to write that wrong. You use your adult brain to like, go, oh, yeah, that's obviously So. Yeah. So, yeah, so I think that's that's doable. Lego Batman will be the one that's, if yep. it's going to kick me in the arse, it'll be that. But then I don't mind Lego Batman beating me. I haven't been beaten yet by 4 in February. Yep. I don't intend to start now. Um, but it, I, I will finish the story mode. Yep. I won't 100% a game. Usually I would say 100% everything. Mm. But nowadays games to get 100% to are getting harder and harder to do. Because yep. they want to give you... Multiplayer as well. I mean, Lego Marvel superheroes get 100% on that. I think I got... 87 percent and i put about 40 hours in yeah which is a lot for a lego game, lego game that's a huge amount um, yeah. but it it didn't feel like i was mm. it didn't feel like a chore the content was there there was just a huge amount of it yeah so what is good is it through february when there's no new games coming out you've also got something to talk about each week yeah. so these four games that'll give you something mm. to it run through your yeah. brilliantly chosen selection well i've bent mine to the Limit of the law for four in February. I think I'm going to use the opportunity to actually try and finish some games which have sat there yeah. for a long time. In some cases, for whatever reason, Tomb Raider is obviously one of them. We talked about it last week. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. enjoying it. I want to get that finished because I am genuinely really enjoying it. It's one of the first games for a long time which has made me really want to get stuck in and finish. And mm-hmm. The reboot? No, sorry, the reboot. Yeah, yeah, the reboot. Yeah, um, just because I've enjoyed it so much. Mm. And not many games have grabbed me like that for a long time. You know, yeah. Destiny is obviously one of those games you just keep ticking over, you keep doing strikes. Yeah. Whereas Tomb Raider's really drawn me in. So that's on there. Fable 3, you mentioned obviously yeah, Fable yeah. Uh, earlier on. That sat much off ages. I blasted through oh, probably 90% of it, maybe more. Ooh. But I didn't want to... That's like, going to be hard to get back to. The problem is, I didn't want to... I didn't want to peak too early. I didn't want to burn through it and then go, oh, finish now, I've got nothing to play. So I'm like... You I'm said playing. you saved the last disappointing 10% to come back to years later. <laughs> Ridiculously. And I'm like, I'll just play a little bit of this. 
and then I'll go back to it and finish it because I won't feel like I've burnt through it and wasted my money mm. and then I never went back to it. So it's time to finally bite that bullet, go back. That'd be good. I should probably have built up billions in rent from the shops. Well, you'll need it mm. to get the good ending. You need yeah. a lot of money. So you I was doing quite well. On, I was doing quite well on that point. So it actually might have helped me. Yeah. So I was already doing quite well. I remember from where I got to. Metro Twenty Thirty Three is another one started. I haven't quite finished it. Same with the book. I want another two chapters to go with the book as well. So, so you're going to double those up. I'm going to double those up. Book and game and get that done. And then Are you going to finish the book first so you don't spoil the ending. I'm already further along in the book than I am in the game anyway. So yeah, I'm saying so you don't want to finish the game, game and then. Uh, or is the last two chapters just them going well that was an exciting adventure that's where they go, back, the to the, where they go back to the Shire at the this end. is pretty much here I mean the mm. amount of Eastern Europeans have had here we're in a, in a cellar mm. this could be Metro yeah Ooh. is that what they keep trying to sell things to you in bullet cases <laughs> yeah it's pretty much they're not threatening you they're actually trying to buy things and what, what's this about Mass Effect well I started one massive Mass Effect playthrough massive Mass Effect see, see what I did there massive effect so I started again from one through to two, and then I'd only played Mass Effect 3 once. Normally I've played them two or three times. Yeah. Um, it just happened to land when my daughter was born, so I finished it. And it landed on your daughter when she was born? It did, that's right. That's terrible. That's why she's like she is, you see. Wants to join for aliens. Uh, but yeah, I only played it once. So yeah. I'm going to go back and play three again. But I thought, well, why not start? So I did one. I'm right at the end of two, and then I can play three again okay. all the way through. So oh. that's obviously quite a big one, a big undertaking. I've played quite it before, and it is bending the rules, but playing it through again, it is a big one. Yeah. Fallout 3, I know. Fallout 3 completed like, twice. Let's, let's spend uh, seven days finishing Fallout 3. <laughs> well, I've completed it twice, but I started a bad yeah. playthrough. Bad, as in, yeah, yeah. in. That was an achievement hunting one, I fully admit it, and I yeah. kind of want to finish it. Yeah, so again, I'm bending for him for a bit to its extreme. It, all you have to do is you goals. have to finish four games. I mean, it doesn't have to be a complete start to finish. Um, I have done one checkpoint. I haven't got to the first checkpoint in the Vars Warfare, so that's pretty much a complete run. Lego Button, I haven't started. New Tamara, I haven't started, but Valiant Hearts, I'm a little bit weird. So it's fine. I mean, for you, a lot of your gaming resolution was finished games yeah. that you've got. So that's that's perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what about you, Matt? You had, got, had a think while you just yeah, stood there? Yeah, I have a few, actually. I've, I've got the reboot of Devil May Cry, yep. DMC, that was a few years ago. I have had that a year and a half, bought it used, sort of sat around, did the first three <laughs> levels, and then it was just before the Xbox One launch, Great so game. it got put away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I am still to finish Chariot, the one okay. that was Xbox One, yeah, yeah, yeah. free. free I one. got a little bit into it and was like, yeah, well, I like this. Good game, Something well. else dropped again. I'm trying to think to make it a round four. I mean, I still haven't finished... What else have I finished? I haven't finished... Um, it was another one of the free ones uh, from Xbox One at the moment, on one of the DLCs. Um, Dungeon something? I can't remember what it was called. On um, 360? No, on Xbox One. One of the games with gold they gave away. It was like a retro... Oh, um, was it Volgar recently? the Barbarian. Oh, that's okay. the one I'm thinking Dungeons, but yeah, Volgar, that's it. <laughs> I, I started the first level. That's and... bastard hard, though. I probably would avoid that one. And also Watch Dogs. <laughs> yeah? Watch Dogs, I was about 25 hours in, and was like, you know what? Got distracted. I've had enough of this game. Yeah. It's not very good. It's disappointing. Well, this is it. This is what this is all about. It's about. It's kind of like just get them out of the way. But do get a story, done. yeah. And it's and it's nice to finish a game. Yeah. It's really, I mean, when I finished Thomas Alone and the credits ran, now did the DLC. The credits ran again. I was like, oh, double credits. Yes. yes. It's a nice feeling, especially when you just sit back and you put your controller down. And you just go, oh, done yeah. that. Yeah. And you do, sometimes games just force you to stop. Whether it's because something else comes out, or like you say with Watch Dogs, it just doesn't make you want to finish it. No. Yeah, Four of February, it's yeah. all about getting on there and doing it. And for some people, it's they don't play enough. Yeah. So it's a good way to get mm. in. Now, obviously, if you're listening at home and you want to get involved, uh, we've created a hashtag on the, on the piece of paper, uh, which is hashtag number four and then Feb. A lot of people do four in Feb, yep. but then you lose a lot of characters on Twitter. Too. Yeah. I'm not a fan of long hashtags. So four Feb. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you're in, if you're listening and you're going to take part, uh, tweet us, tweet yeah, us tweet us, yeah. with the hashtag and let us know what you're getting involved in and send us progress and we'll read it out yeah. on the show I'll try and get a post on the blog as well we'll try and get a little list what everybody's going yeah. in for including yeah. ourselves obviously that'd be good and then we can do status yeah, updates and things and like tweet tweet. good tweet now if you say tweet us say you wish you tweet handle <laughs> I hate when people do that we're not, we're not that organised yet they know who we are <laughs> so they know it's we're at we at we are the lollipop. There we get to, yeah, yeah. We are the lollipop. Tweet us at the felt it instead of the felt it Tweet us at some we are random felt it misspelled. All right, so at this point in the show, I um, we, we used Google Docs this week for the did. running order because yeah. I'm fed up getting more and more waiting, every week. waiting for Rob to email me back to add something onto the running order. So I said suggestion for topic. What did you come up with, Rob? 
Is Hero by Chad Kroger the best movie tie-in song or superhero movie tie-in song ever? No. Right, next <laughs> Um Five Nights at Freddy's. Have either of you played Five Nights at Freddy's no. one or two? I have not. But you're aware of it? I've heard the name. I am not. You're so not. maybe in like This is a, a weird one. Right Now this, it only came about, there's two games being released, so you'd think, oh, you must have heard of them. There's two games. If you look on the App Store, at any time, they're in the top ten of mobile app stores. Mm-hmm. They are hugely popular. Essentially, the first game came out, micro-budget, indie game. You are the night kind of security guard at this fast food restaurant place. Uh, you know Chuck E. Cheese? Yes. In America? They have like the animatronic band mm-hmm. that plays mm-hmm. and stuff. It's basically, there's these animatronics and you're the night guard and you're basically told, you know, you've got to keep an eye on the animatronics. So you've got sort of a grid that's all different security cameras and you've got two doors you can close, but when you close the door, it uses some of your power supply from your generator. Is he voiced by Ben Stiller? No. Oh, <laughs> <if you> see him. <laughs> and um, you've got like lights and things. So you've turned the lights on, mm-hmm. then you're going to use power. more power. Mm-hmm. If you close the door, you use more power. But you've got to get through till six o'clock in the morning without running out of power. Because the animatronics are possessed by some horrible thing. And when you're not looking at them, they can move. If you're looking at them, they can't move. So you'll flick through the security camera, and then like one minute the animatronic will be like just casually just stood there, and next time you come back it'll be right at the camera like that, and they basically work their way towards you mm-hmm. in the office, and then if you notice them, you turn the light on and they're there, slam the door down, mm-hmm. and then keep a check, and they'll go away, and you're doing that, and it's basically just a complete stress test. <laughs> it's something that people play on Twitch a lot, yep. and YouTube. It's more interesting to watch people play it the than it is to play it themselves. Same thing happened with Outlast. Okay. Oh, it's yeah, a yeah. very stressful game to play, but hilarious to watch someone else mm. get frightened. It's all jump scares, basically. Uh, the second game came out, I think, about three or four months after the first one. Because that's the thing with indie games. You can literally just say, well, oh, it's the same basic <laughs> format. Mm. Chuck another one out while yeah. it's really popular. They're a couple of quid. Kids absolutely adore it. It's terrifying. <laughs> like, you don't get killed yeah. as such. If they catch you, mm-hmm. they get you, and they don't understand and shove you into an animatronic skeleton, which, of course, will kill you. Yeah. And that's that's basically what's happening to you. And there's all these stories about it's all based on this real-life murder that happened in a Chuck E. Cheese restaurant, and there's always <laughs> possession. The animatronics and, killed someone. <laughs> well, um, somebody basically went in, and, mm. yeah, it's it's worth looking into. Uh, <laughs> oh. it's, it's not a very nice <laughs> Would you say story. iPad, iPhone, doesn't matter? Uh, iPads is what I've played it on. Yep. I've also played it on Steam. Yep. Uh, but the iPad was really good because it was all touch. And that worked quite well, just sort of flicking through the cameras and stuff. Good sound, headphones on? Definitely with headphones on, and definitely in the dark, and definitely have someone near you to laugh the hell out of you when you wake yourself. <laughs> um, but the third one has just got a teaser, and it's set 20 or 30 years after the events of the last game. So someone's now basically bought the restaurant where all these horrible things have happened, and it's become a bit of a, like an urban legend. Like people go, oh, apparently somebody was killed here. Ooh. And a company has built it as, as like a, yeah. a haunted house attraction. So they want to make it as scary as possible. So now the potential is maybe you're not a security guard anymore. Maybe you could just be a guest locked in there. Mm. Maybe it can go. It's just a teaser. So it's all yeah. speculation. Mm. Most people would expect it to be another security job because that's how the games are built. Yeah. But quite exciting that there's a third one mm. on the way. So yeah, do have a look at that. That's very, mm. very good. Um, Fantastic Four, or Fant-Four-Stick, if you yeah. actually look at the poster, yeah. that's what it says. <laughs> it's a stick. Um, the trailer came out today. It's a teaser trailer. Which, considering it's out in September, mm-hmm. is yeah, they've done a very good job day, of yeah. keeping that security. Yeah. Because we didn't know very much at all. I, only probably what they've shown in the teaser. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't really explained anything. No. It's... And it's, and that's, I love that. Mm. Because so many films now, you know yep. almost everything Too before much. you watch. I wish they do it with games more often. Yeah, so and so's yeah. coming out. Oh wait, boom, here it is. Well, this is, I mean, that's right. five, five, five Nights at Freddy's. It shows you enough to get you thinking, but not enough to tell you what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And with Fantastic Four, I mean, essentially what you've seen is you basically nothing. Yeah, the Fantastic Four is not the Fantastic Four we know, mm. although they're going to end up being somewhat near. The creation story is going to be completely different. They're yep. now about ten years younger than we yeah, expect. Yeah, very young. Mm. But I think that's going to make it a lot more relatable. I think the, the problem with the last Fantastic Four guess, mm. film, apart from the fact they were just shit, yeah. was, I mean, Michael Chiklis as the thing. Mm. 
Well, I liked him in that drama thing. Was it The Wire? He was in The Shield. The Shield. The Shield. Oh, he was yeah. right in that, but I could only see him as that in a funny costume. Have you ever seen the Family Guy skit with him? Yes. A detective yeah. No matter how muscular I get, I will never be muscular. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a... Um, episode of Arrested Development where Tobias dresses up as the thing yeah. and uh, has to tell people that he's a um, sexual crim- a sex criminal <laughs> and it's, uh, it's brilliant but so this is it it's like the, the, the Fantastic Four is a ridiculous yeah. comic anyway I mean it's stupid yeah. you've got a man who can stretch into any shape you've got a woman who can go invisible mm. you've got a bloke who can set himself on fire and a man who's made of rock yeah. it's almost like they just went I don't care Whatever. Find a man in a metal suit with a green. Well, this is it. Like, so we know that on. I mean, I've been looking into the trailer. Yeah, no Doctor Doom in the trailer. Well, you say that. Well, no. There is a red dot on a map with, if you really look carefully, some coordinates. If you type those longitude latitude into Google, it will send you to a site that tells you the exact coordinates of where Latveria is. Yeah. And this is like an actual accepted canon. Things. Yeah. Now the story goes according to some of the the, the information that was leaked. Is that Doctor Doom in this isn't a big supervillain? He's a mm. hacker, and so he might have something twist. to do mm. with how things are going wrong and bits like that. Yeah. So that if, with a younger cast, yeah. now we are in a world where hackers are the mm. biggest. Crew. I mean, you look at what happened with the interview. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. World War Three almost happened because someone hacked someone. Mm. Because of Seth Rogen. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. To be fair, if <laughs> Seth Rogen and James Franco hadn't made the film in the first place, I mean, we should have known. <laughs> but <laughs> it's uh, at the same time, it's that weird thing of like, just suddenly, superpowers are like going, whoa, whoa. Calling North Korea a superpower seems a bit weird. <laughs> because, frankly, if they were superpower, if they were like a superpower, they'd be Aquaman or something. Just yeah. shit, frankly. <laughs> they got, here, how about dolphins? <laughs> oh! like, what? A dolphin? Mm. I mean, I'm. 500 miles inland. What's it going to do? Dolphinado. No, that's a sharknado. And even <laughs> if dolphins fell out of the sky, what are they going to do? I've still got a chainsaw. I know how to fight a shark. But never mind. Um, so yeah, so we've got Miles Teller, who is a phenomenal actor. Uh, he's currently in Whiplash with J.K. Simmons. 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 Jonah Jameson. Yep. Um, that is ridiculously good. He also did a film, and it was something like The Wonderful Me. I can't remember what it's called now. But he was very, very good in that. I totally, mm-hmm. he should be in this film. He's one of those actors who just deserves a really good movie. And Toys and Trust seem to be going all out to sort of say, last Fantastic Falls was so silly. Yeah. Now let's go so dark. Yeah. <laughs> and let's go so kind of almost realistic, almost like Man of Steel level yeah. superhero. It was just, it's, it does look quite mm-hmm. bleak. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you've got um, Jamie Bell or Billy Elliot yep. as the thing. Which most people, when they said it, it was like, Billy Elliot's the thing. But in the well, trailer, yeah. He does, I mean, he's done a few things. He's a bad guy, or sort of a bad guy in Jumper, wasn't he? Yep. And um, he is, he's a lot older than, I mean, he's what, 15 years since Billy Elliot? Yep, at least, yeah. So, you know, he's coming a long way since Ooh. he was a gay miner's son. And, uh, well, not gay miner's, he was a ballet dancer. Mm. I mean, he was gay, was he? No. He made it just... sound like his dad was gay then. He was a, a yeah. gay miner's son. Well, maybe. He was the gay son of a miner. He was, yeah. yeah. There we go. Go. <laughs> <It's getting more laughs> the fact that a miner was having sex before oh. he should have done his stuff. That'll be the Daily Mail tomorrow. It will be. Um, and then you've got the girl, who I can't remember her name, but she's from uh, the newsroom. Hey, the, the, I can't remember. The newsroom was a TV series, but I couldn't tell you what she's from. No, I can't remember what she's from. Her, but she's a, she's a, another fine actress. Ooh. And um, and then obviously the black guy... <laughs> Who's no, you can't say coloured. Yeah, he he's that. black guy now. Yep. So um <laughs> did they do the this nod week? <laughs> when the inevitable crossover happens and Fantastic Four feature in, let's say, a Captain America film. Yeah. Do they do the Captain America nod to the no. new No. Not no. at all. Nothing. No. Not even. If a anything, week. now human torch looks more like Falcon. Yeah. So um but yeah, so But he doesn't we're... give him the the wink of Well they're not in... Captain America's not in it? No. But so, if they do a crossover, so if they do, then yeah. I would I would prefer not in that film. In, in the future yeah, film, if they yeah. did do a crossover and Chris Evans winks at a black guy, <laughs> I don't know if it will get the joke. <laughs> it's in the Lego Marvel game. There's an achievement for it. Is so it? yeah, okay. if you put Human Torch black and guy. Captain America, it's something like um, Brothers from Another. Oh, that's not like that. Yeah. So that's quite a nice little little touch. Yeah, but 
I'm, I quite like the trailer. I like mm. the tone of it. I think I really want this film to be good, just because, as you said, the Fantastic Four potentially can be so preposterous, mm. but it has that dark it's tone. It's very, very camp. So you've got this quite wide ranging. Yeah. The spectrum of possibility of the dark tone and the ridiculousness of having a stretchy man well, and his orange, his the orange only, friend. The only bit that worries me is I didn't enjoy Days of Future Past. Oh, I did. I did. Yeah, see, I, I was. Was very it director or producer from that doing it? I know it was one or the other. It was uh, director producer, of Days of Future. Producer, mm, isn't it? It's the producer. It's the studio. Oh, the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so 20th Century Fox, basically, yeah, that's yeah. the link. It's yeah. from the studio that bought you Home Alone. Mm. Um, Home Alone 2! Yeah. yeah! So, this isn't a Disney joint, then? This is. No, this is basically 20th Century Fox owns certain. I know, yeah, like mm. Spider Man. Spider Man, Fantastic yeah. Four. They did have Daredevil, Excellent. but that's now gone back to Marvel properly. Mm. Um, I thought so, Spider Man was Sony. Yes. yes, yeah, that is so. so there we go, but, I think that, but I think that comes under the same agreement Does with because I know Sharks. I Spider-Man think got re-released by Sony because if they didn't do it within their contractual yeah. year, they lose the. But rights. then there's still talk about that coming over. I mean, really, see what, what's weird is Marvel own the rights to all the characters overreaching. Yeah, but the film rights. Yeah, that's yeah. So all I want Marvel to do is just go. Well, we'll put Miles Teller. Yeah, is Miles Teller, yeah. isn't it? Who's yeah. um, Miles, Miles Morales? That's Miles Teller. Miles Morales, oh. the new Spider-Man. Oh. Just put him in the so, Avengers. Yeah. Because it's done then. You haven't well, got so Peter Parker Spider-Man. Well, they talked Civil War, didn't they? It wouldn't be Andrew Garfield. Yeah. No. But it would be Spider-Man. Yeah. yeah. You could do as different Spider-Man. So. The, that does make me quiz a bit. When I saw could, the trailer, I thought, ooh. Because you could technically good. still do that in theory. They could still do the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man storyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the comic books, so you could have hmm. concurrent stories. Yeah. So you could have... Precisely, you could have one in Civil War and still have Andrew. Well, you've got the Spider Verse. That's the thing. Like Spider Verse is a big comic event at the moment, and so you just have a Spider Man. It doesn't have to be Mm. the Spider Man, and it doesn't have to be that series films with those actors and those characters. Particularly as obviously we've got two different Quicksilver and Scarlet Witches going on. First Quicksilver War was better. Well, this is it. Well, new one we haven't seen. And also the fact that obviously children of Magneto. But we can't mention Magneto and the Avengers nope. because we're not allowed not to say that. We're not allowed to call yeah. them mutants either. They've nope. just got powers. Yep. It's um, it's interesting how it's all panning out because it's it must drive Marvel mental not being able to just oh, do yeah. the event movies they want to do because of all the deals they sold. That's the thing that's questioning me now. I saw the trailer and was like, it looks good. And now that I've yeah. realised that it's not a Disney joint, it's a 20th Century Fox, yeah. the Disney stuff has been so strong. Yeah. Mm. But then this the other is stuff the thing, that's like, non Disney has been. Just because it's still me. a Marvel yeah, film, it'll get its it. crowd. So they can oh, chuck yeah. the money to it and know it's going to make its money back. Yeah. I like the fact that by changing the origin story of the Fantastic Four, by making it a separate entity, it can sit in its own reality. Mm-hmm. Like they, I mean, if they want, they can do a crossover with the X-Men. That's yeah. absolutely yeah. fine. I don't want them to. But they could. Frankly, but they could. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I don't think the, the, the themes of... The and if you look at the well. world of the X-Men compared to the world of the Disney Marvel films, they're very different. Okay. There is there's a lot more political side to it here, whereas obviously... Other, Winter Soldier with like hills, kind of it does. X Men does have that undertone of that's what racial equality, mutant equality. Yeah, which it always was. Yeah. It was always about mm. that. And uh, Fantastic Four kind of will sit nicely there in this form. Mm. It wouldn't have worked, and it didn't work the last two films mm. they did because they put stars in. I mean, putting Jessica Alba in yeah. was yeah. just because she was Jessica Alba. Yeah, um, she wasn't. Sue Storm. No. It was Jessica Alba in a very tight costume. Mm. Hey, everyone. <laughs> or oh, Nez Chris Evans. He's in a very tight costume. Mm. Hey, and there's Ian Griffith, dude. Nobody ever fancies ever. But let's make. <laughs> he looks good with the white streak in his hair. Oh, Close enough. Awful. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so that's on the way. And I really hope I don't find out too much more, really, before the film comes out. I'd like that to be the major trailer. Yeah. Up until almost August. In then, go, yeah, inevitably come. They need to, obviously they need to make it time, exciting. Yeah. But what I don't want is like they did with to spoil the plot. Because Days of Future Past, the other thing that bothered me about that film, because for me, I love that comic mm. storyline. Film just didn't live up to it. It was a good yeah. film, but right. it didn't live up to my mm. expectations of what they could have made, especially mm. Brian Singer. Yeah. Um, if it had been Brett Ratner, I'd have gone. Well, fair enough. That's Brett <laughs> Ratner. Uh, he ruined mm. Last Stand. But as it was, it was like oh, I kind of wish like one of the other directors had made this now. Yeah. And that was a shame because. It's a fine film, mm. but it's nowhere near as good as the Disney Marvels. It just felt mm. like a very, it felt like a 90s movie. Mm. And I didn't want that. I wanted this massive storyline that is huge. Yeah. In, I mean, obviously, to non comic book readers, it's not that huge, but the Days of Future Past for it, the story of it is huge. Yeah. And, uh, you know, changing characters around and playing around with it. The problem is... I had for me, I really enjoyed the film. Yeah. But the difficulty, I, I, not, quite sure they captured the threat 
the tone exactly. of the threat. Because the whole thing was, basically, if this doesn't work, they fuck. Yeah. Mm. And, or they, they basically, they well, the 90s more or less TV said that, series that, did it better. Yeah, that tone didn't catch that tone. And if a 90s Saturday morning cartoon mm. can do Days of Future Past better than mm. a film called Days of Future Past, yeah. then I'm going to be disappointed mm. by it. See, the, the cartoon had more Bishop. It did, yeah, and it cool. had, but it had time. Oh, mm. And that's the thing, like the comics have time to let mm. this sink in, and the film had to make it all work as one yeah. whole. If it was a two-parter, that would have worked a lot better. Mm. But it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've got Apocalypse on the way, and that will be hopefully good. Mm. <laughs> but I, I don't could, hold that, out hope yeah, for it. I mean, that, again, potentially could be really good, in the same way you've kind of got, yeah, I know it's different, Age of Ultron, obviously. Mm. Apocalypse was that kind of... yeah. Armageddon-esque character. He could just wipe the planet off the face of the map yeah. if he wanted to. So they've got to capture that kind of tone that he's that level of And that's the thing. Like, I mean, the, with the, the four horsemen and everything as well. And the sort of teaser thing at the end mm. of Days of Future Past just didn't really tap into that that much. It kind of just it said, but hey, it, you, it was almost like to say, look, go home, look this guy yeah, up because you I need to read up on this. that yeah. little... Uh, ten little. second. I prefer <laughs> that little ten second teaser they did there for Apocalypse. Yeah. Than what they did at the end of Winter Soldier with Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch and that's yeah. kind of character name. But then, what about that at the end of long. Avengers when they did the the oh, oh, um, Thanos. Thanos. Uh, Thanos, 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 yeah. See, see, but then even then, a lot of it's a similar I'm, thing of like a lot of people like who is this purple? But guy? that's the thing. Like, like, if you know the comics, yeah, straight away you go like, oh, Thanos. Yeah. But you already knew Thanos was going to be it. So it wasn't a surprise. See, yeah. I didn't. The only one that surprised me, and you you were both there, was the Howard the Duck reveal. And which was the... I think everybody was stupid. Like, yeah, it was this stupid. is the whole cinema. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. And it was genuinely like everyone was just like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'll Marvel. just sat through the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even oh. Del Toro sitting there with his face in his hand going, oh, But it was almost like Marvel just went, look, you know that the Avengers is coming. We don't need to show you anything. Yeah. What can we possibly show you that's going to yeah. sit right? We'll just and they revealed the lifting the Thor hammer scene by that point as well yeah, online. Yeah. So that would have really been the after credits. I do wonder whether oh. they just decided that actually let's just have a bit more fun. Yeah, yeah. it was and just too just long for in. me. It was just too, that bit in themselves was just too long. That was my issue. With yeah, it. it was just too long. It, it almost tried to set up even how the all the backstory. Was snappy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They just wanted to say, look, we don't want to have to introduce these characters in the next film. Yeah. So let's try and do that now. There they are. Mm. Look, who, you know, they're, they're in prison. Right, there's also something going on here. Now we can yeah. get on, and we don't need to spend yeah, that time. Just, Although, which was uh, the one that was where they did the trailer? The end scenes were X Men, but the film was an X Men. Was it Spider Man? That was Spider Man. That was, oof, yeah. And that really wasn't did, much the, of anything. But that's the thing. That's why I said the, the Spider Man and the X Men do kind of cross over yeah. because although they're different companies, they're still owned by the same rights. And was, I think there was. Mm, Maybe it's just my memory playing tricks on me. There were more Spider-Man, X-Men crossovers than not the comic mm. books. Yeah, 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 definitely. So there, there's kind of that feeling it's more interlocking even for fans of the yeah. series. I just wish Spider-Man had a bit of X-Men in it. I, mm. The big thing, and the big thing I always said when like the Battle of New York happened in Avengers, what annoys me is when you get these big events and the other heroes are just completely. Yeah. You absent. said it about Ant Man, didn't you? On last yeah. show, like they could just. Whereas Ant Man been doing all this, yeah. Yeah. so they've got to explain that and away a little is, bit. He hasn't just show. not been there, but he's not been around. 30 yeah. years, yeah. essentially, because at this point we're seeing old You kind of could have explained it in a way of sense if you had a shot of... I know, maybe they haven't planned it at this point, but mm. it might, you see Michael Douglas running through the streets trying yeah. to escape this, and obviously that's his moment where he goes, you know, the world's in danger. Don't say that, because what's going to happen now is someone's going to do a George soup, Lucas and go back <laughs> and add in... Michael Douglas and Jar Jar Binks running through the streets. Add in Michael Douglas <laughs> riding a Jewback through the streets of New but, York. You know, they... If, if they had the arc, maybe they just hadn't got everything sorted in time. But that could have been the yeah. moment. That could help you explain it away. But, I, but they could have been, got caught in, in they the could crossfire. Have put it in Agents of Shield or something like that. Yeah, That's exactly. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. They've got all these tools that they're. Yeah. Doing. Or the one shots as well. Mm. They haven't done a one shot on a DVD or a Blu ray for a good few films. Did ben now. Kingsley, the last one? That was the last yeah. one, yeah. Which was brilliant. Mm. But See, I yeah. loved him as a Mandarin. I know a lot of hardcore comic book fans had an issue with that. Mm. I thought he was great. But I like the fact that that very much highlights that he definitely was the Mandarin. Yeah more than the film managed to do. Yeah, it was yeah. almost like, just in case you didn't get it, mm. he's cleverer than you, yeah. <laughs> and he's managed to trick you. And yeah. it's that whole thing of... But those one-shots should have been better used. Yeah. Because, obviously, there was that one with the weapon that had fell during about New York, which wasn't yeah. great. But that one, the one-shot with mm. uh, Mandarin should have been the thing. Actually, now, if we've got Doctor Strange, yeah. let's do something that yeah. sets him... This, he's in this world. Mm. Even if it's just him doing a reading or something, yeah. or he's talking... To some people who are showing off Portland. But like you said, like you've that. got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and 
they've tried to tie it in, but not too much, uh, which I understand because obviously yeah. you want it to be a standard. Its own a lot feet. of the tie-ins are retrospective ties. So they've got yeah. like Lady Sif. Lady Sif, exactly. And, and it's like, but that's not a new introduction. The that's from just... Battle of New York, and yeah. But the other problem they've kind of got now is with Agent Peggy Carter, which has just come out, which you could use to flesh out a lot of backstory yeah. potentially. Yeah. But I don't think it's got any rights to be shown in the UK at the moment. No. No. So okay. You could pirate it, which is probably a discussion for another time for us because well, uh, it's one of those things that when you turn, go, the actual it's not on law, UK TV, here's this, thing, I'm yeah, going the, online. While we're standing in the grounds yeah. of a video shop, the actual law states if something is commercially available mm. and you download it, that is piracy. Mm. If it is not available, so say something's not yeah. been shown on TV, it's never been released, you can't actually prosecute it mm. because there's no loss. Yeah. yeah. So actually, if I you pirate a TV show, cool. yeah, it's absolutely fine to do but, so. But that's what and I mean. though it's still a grey yeah, area. Yeah. But, but, but anyway, we, we've kind of got But, but this is, is Marvel. You, yeah. Why is it not being released? Like, well, Agents of Shield was shown Agents almost the same well. week yeah, as America well, on Channel it. Four. I know. It wasn't even right. behind a paywall. Yeah, but because it was released mm. to everyone, and it was said, look, you know, this is this won't probably sell behind a paywall. Yeah, it's not big enough. But what we're going to do is mm. say, like, you remember when you used to like like Alphas or mm. you used to like X Files? Well, yeah. We've got kind of done that but in the Marvel world. Yeah, yeah. There it is. With Clark Gregg, remember him? Everybody yeah. liked him. Everybody liked oh, Agent Coulson. Agent Coulson, who died. Yeah, he's he's, he's back. Mm. Yeah. So, and we'll, we'll explain it, but we won't explain yeah, it. Yeah, we'll tease it for a little bit. <laughs> It'll be very funny. Yeah. And um, also, Cobra Smolders in every now and again, and Nick Fury will be in there every yeah. now and again. And, 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 and that's the thing. Like, mm. Agent Shield should have been the big tool that Marvel uses to set everything yeah. up. And I know it shouldn't. It shouldn't only be that. It should be its own mm. thing. I just think they were a bit kind of. Uh, it's yeah. still just it's pissing me off, Batman. That's thing, all. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. I mean, one thing that got me with with Agents of Shield, and I'm sorry if it's, it's a spoiler alert, but they talked about the Kree, yeah. which obviously ties into Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. So I don't mean it's little threads from Agents of Shield, mm. which again you could have used. Well, if you use it too much, then it becomes too tired into the films and it can't stand on its own two feet. Fine, I get that. But again, like I said, Agent, Agent Peggy Carter, how's that going to tie things yeah. in? You know, these vehicles are there to pull the strings together yeah. or at least flesh up backstories mm. so you don't have to waste time in the films going this is who this bloke is because it's yeah. already kind of been done well this is why for me when Amazing Spider-Man 2 came out as much as I didn't like the overall film the fact that it just starts there's Spider-Man like yeah. why do we need every time a comic book movie comes out why do we need an hour mm. of because if it's Hulk you know who he is yeah. stop trying to come up with an origin what story what they did with the start it Edward Norton yeah because you know, you don't need it. Hulk, yeah. You never needed it. Mm. With Iron Man, maybe a little bit more, mm. because you need to set Tony Stark up as a character, not Iron but Man. But again, you have the younger generations to always think about. There's always the there's always going to be the teenagers. But they don't want to sit for an hour waiting for a superhero to appear. True. Mm. It's you know, you go to watch these films, and uh, I think if you go to a film called Iron Man Two. There's an expectation you know what you're going to go. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be two Iron Men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, um, and then, like, this is the other thing. I was talking to a guy earlier. I've got this customer who comes in, and he is the is biggest he the guy Marvel who asked nerd. for The Grinch 2 with Sarah Michelle Keller? No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. The horror film, The Grinch 2. The um, buff is out there. But no, he came in, and we were talking about Age of Ultron. Yep. And he was saying about he'd basically gone back and bought through comics like, or from Marvel, whatever. Mm -hmm. He bought a load of Ultron comics. And he was saying he was impressed because depending on which story you read, yeah. it still fits with the new movie. Yeah. And he's like, this is this, and this is this, this, this. And he then got me talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Because obviously Ultron goes into space yep. and then creates this massive threat that they're fought by the Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, if you look at Marvel's run of films, there's enough time for Ultron at the end of this one to go yep. and then be the big In Guardians bad 2. for Guardians 2. Mm -hmm. And he was like, and that, he's very excited about because you know by that point that that's a big threat. Yeah. And the Guardians won't be fighting Thanos because Thanos has come into well, the that's Avengers. That's the end game, effectively. So it's kind of switching it over, mm. really. And and he was getting ridiculously excited just at the thought that he'd read a comic and he was like, oh, but yeah, but, it, but he does that in a comic. And I was like, yeah, but also Ultron was made by Hank Pym and he wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but... but, but, but <laughs> so much like source that. material. And that's it. And that's what I like. And this is what I like about the Fantastic Four, bringing it back on topic, is it doesn't have to be the comics. Yeah. Anybody who reads comics knows that there have been three or four versions of the Fantastic Four. Yeah. I mean, Johnny Storm would be dead. Mm. I mean, the Fantastic Four comics are finished. Yeah. There is no Fantastic Four mm. anymore. Um, Johnny yeah. Storm died, mm. and it was then the three for a while. Yeah. You know, all these things, people in their head have got like, they think of the rise of the Underminer, or whatever it's yeah. called, the, the mole people thing. There was that mm. one cover that was the big first issue. Yeah. And they think of that, and they think, it has to look like that. Yeah. It, doesn't it doesn't have to look like a I'm, 1960s I mean, Jack Kirby book. It has to look... I've got Fantastic Four comics where... 
Reed Richards and Sue Storm have got kids. Yeah. So the kids in it as well. Yeah. You know, which takes it down the kind of like an incredible type route. But there's so many different ways. As you said, there's so many different Ultron stories. Yeah. Well, I've got Bride of Ultron, the Marvel pocketbook at home. Yeah. So uh, theoretically, we've got Ant Man. We could have Wasp. We could yeah. do the Bride of Ultron storyline. And there's nothing it. stopping us. And so with Fantastic Four, what they've done is they've taken a very silly comic mm. that had a serious moments and yeah. made a very serious, or potentially very serious. Mm. I mean, the t- t- trailer the tone is certainly serious. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's also suggested its own version, mm. and I like that. Yeah, I want that. The Amazing Spider-Man films mm. sit completely different to the Sam Raimi trilogy yeah. because they're more mm. the spy, the Ultimate Spider-Man storyline. Yeah, and Oscorp is a completely different mm. entity, and the villains look different yeah. because they're more grounded in reality, which yeah. is almost like what the Dark Knight did. And it's it needs that. Yeah, and Fantastic Four needs that because if we're ever going to have a Galactus. Yeah. That isn't just a weird space cloud yeah. or a giant pink man. Mm. I mean, I want that to be a genuine threat. Yeah. And I never understand how that's going to work. But now, mm. looking at this weird alternate dimension thing and mm. dimension shifts and travels. He's also got what they do with Apocalypse. Okay, yeah. but, but uh, you know, Apocalypse is kind of that same mould. Yeah. Where he could increase his size and stuff, which is preposterous to most people yeah. outside of a cartoon or comic book setting. And that's but it. And that's why how do you do making a live action mm. film. Of something like that. I mean, that's why Galactus yeah. turned to a cloud in the first place. And why Green Lantern called, fell down a bit. <laughs> Do you know, I, watched, I rewatched the extended cut of that mm. recently. Far better than the regular version. Should is this released. an Alien 3 type thing where the director's cut is a hell of a lot better? Not, than not a hell of a lot better. It has one very particular scene, which is when... Well, this isn't a spoiler, because I've been, When his father dies mm-hmm. on the runway, there's a lot longer there. Right. And it really concentrates it fleshes on him. Out how go, uh, how and then the rest of the film balances out not a lot better. Because you then you don't just see him as this demonising dick. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's actually a film that deserved a bit more. Mm. Do you reckon he'll be time. better in the Deadpool? Have you seen the the well, sample? The sample. The sample was very good. Then they said they weren't going to make it. Then they said they are going to make yeah. it. But now they said it could be a twelve A. Yeah. How do you make a Deadpool twelve A? I know. And this is the thing. Even right? in the sample, it cuts the yeah head off. It, and... Deadpool has to be an eighteen. Has to be. Yeah. Dread was an eighteen. Yeah. And it had to be, and yeah. it was a brilliant film. The, the re-release, and it was, absolutely, it was good, yeah. Yeah. absolutely yeah. bombed. No, I am the law. Nobody but went still. to the cinema to see an eighty-rated three D movie. Yeah, but it was because if you want to make that source material do proud, what do you do? You either make a film for everyone with Sylvester Stallone and Rob Schneider, or <laughs> you make Dread, where it's not the actor. No, it is Dread. I mean, obviously. Yeah. We know it's Carlo. Yeah. Yes, yeah. It doesn't matter because you're not point. seeing him, you're yeah, seeing the helmet. True. It's, there isn't a yeah. convoluted story about cloning and things either. Well, it's, I mean, it's the thing. But the first thing they did mm. in Dread was Stallone take the helmet off. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. No! Yeah. What? That was, that was probably the first disappointing comic movie, and I saw Howard the Duck. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't also disappoint by that. But I, I have seen Nick Fury, Agent of Shield with David Hasselhoff as Nick Fury. That's a good film. <laughs> that is a really good Do you know what I miss? Film. I know they've made a TV series, but the DC Flash. Yeah, I remember that film. I had the game on the Game Boy. Original well, game the, Boy. The, the Flash from that is the dad in the new Flash. Yeah, is he really? Yeah, yeah. the actor played the old Flash. Oh. It's um, yeah, it's uh, I, I have I like that. That's a nice little time. I think it's. I always thought. I, I still think mm. most DC super superheroes fucking stupid. Mm. I mean, the Flash. Ooh, I can run really quickly. Oh, he's one of my favorites. Oh, because oh, because you're into fitness. No, I just like. <laughs> I'm the sort of person who sits there. I just want to be powerful. I don't want to be able to run fast. Yeah, oh, I could run to China What's the in two point? seconds, but. Oh, See, I like oh, green. I like green. Just need to wait for your twenty-seven yeah. pence yeah. plugs. <laughs> That's I'll his power. Yeah. Would and you like to pay one pound shipping? How can we get it? Somebody <laughs> said to me, "Oh yeah, but he can, he can like, he can manipulate time as well." I went, so could Doc Emmett Brown. He didn't have superpowers. He just yeah. turned a DeLorean into a fucking time machine, and it was cool. And it had flames left and behind. And it recycled bananas. He was like, "Yeah, but so the, the Flash planet. can leave flames behind." I went, "Yeah." But he isn't a DeLorean, is he? <laughs> he doesn't lift his arm up like that every time somebody comes out of him. What's no. Cool. Have you seen Flashpoint Paradox? The DC cartoon movie? Uh, no. Really, no. really... Is that one of the DC originals? Yeah, series? Flashpoint Paradox. Very adult. Yeah, for I'm a... going to say a lot of them are. We've got upstairs in Incredible. the shop, we've got um, the movie. Suicide Squad one, the Salt and Arkham. Oh. And that's got Harley Quinn having sex with... Uh, the, um, the sniper one who's really good. Deadshot. Deadshot. Yeah. And uh, I was watching it with my son and he went, and I thought, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, sir. But they are. I mean, and again, great. The right, the source series is right. And yeah. the Dark Knight uh, Returns, as yeah. well as part one and part two. Very, very good. Mm. He's pretty much the graphic novel 
put in a 94. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do see just most of, I mean, if you look at them, you've got like Aquaman and you've got Wonder Woman. Oh, she's, she's a tall woman with a magical lasso and an invisible plane. Fuck off. <laughs> do you know who Marvel's got? A spider man. And he's not a man spider. No, no, no. He's a, he's a man with the powers of a spider and he's a science geek. Yeah. Because that's what kids want to read about. No, oh, look, look, look at me. Look, I'm Green Lantern. I've got a magical ring and I can fly through space with it. And then do what? I can make anything I think of. Well, I've got like Minecraft. Next, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Some of the DC do get a bit carried away with the powers some of the time. I mean, don't get me wrong, Marvel has had some ridiculous characters. But the main body, I mean, you look at the Justice League compared to the Avengers. Yeah. Right? The Avengers is just cool. Every single character in the Avengers is cool. The Justice League, oh, what? No. Not even Cyborg can save it. Uh, yeah. And uh, as Dalek said when we discussed uh, comic books years ago on Holocaust, he says, there comes a point in your life where you realise that you're either a Marvel kid or a DC kid. And then you get to a point where you just realise that you don't like DC. You just like Batman. Well, <laughs> see, I am, I like some of the Green Arrow storylines. I've got a few. But that's only now they've realised what they need to do. Yeah. DC have learned a lot the from one, the, the One of the, my favourite graphic novels I've got is a Green Arrow that's by Kevin Smith. Yeah. And the thing I liked about that is he actually went off and tried to learn archery just there to was get a time, what this guy had to do. About the time that the Green X-Men Arrow. movies started doing really well, mm. that, that's when Kevin Smith started writing for things and, and yeah. you had all these people. Oh, yeah, so it, it, there was a rise that. of comic books. And the films weren't great, but the comics themselves evolved massively. It was the yeah. biggest shift since the 70s. 70s, you had suddenly, like, um, Frank Miller get mm. involved. And then everything changed again. Yeah. You lost, left the Silver Age behind. After that camp stuff, mm. it got very gritty. Now you kind of see it. It's all at that point now where comic books are cool again. And you do get people just writing incredible storylines. And they've got better and better and better. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, DC has done some amazing, phenomenal stuff. Mm. Partic- I mean, particularly with Batman... Also, Green Arrow, yeah. Daredevil stuff, which is Marvel. But that went from being a, a never want to read it in my life yeah. to a must read. Mm. And uh, a lot of it has come from because this whole new generation of writers and, and inkers who can say, you know, I got into this because I started reading comics because of these films yeah. 15 years ago. <laughs> you know, you've now got people who, thanks to the internet, are able to do web comics mm. and are then going on and, and doing better things because they've been able to just put their stuff out. Whereas before, it was very much, you have to take your work, go to a publisher and go, this is my work. Yeah. And I'll go, all right, we'll put you in yeah. over there and then you do some work and you work your way up. Mm. You don't even need to do that anymore. You can you, you look on DeviantArt. Yeah. Some of the well, ridiculous talent. <laughs> no, some of the ridiculous talent there yeah. for people who have done their own versions and, or yeah. they've done their own alternate version. I yeah. remember a guy who did, because obviously you've got Captain America, got Captain Britain. Mm. He went through and he was like just doing all these different yeah. nationalities and things and he was reworking all of it. Mm. He was doing like British Batman and yeah. stuff like that. Do you remember British Superman? A bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but again, that's DC being stupid. See, Superman's my favourite, but he's also their biggest... Superman's your favourite? Favourite. Jesus Christ, character. I don't like... You've never heard of Dungeon Keeper? I, Superman's Superman, your favourite. He's, right. the, he's I'm DC's gonna... biggest yeah, hero, he has, but also he, their yeah. biggest... Like, I'm going to stop. I'm going to turn, turn you away Superman. from Superman. Okay. Okay? Right. What is Superman's biggest power? Of all the heroes... Flight. You'd say he's probably the strongest. Oh, yes. Right? He can turn back time. Yeah. Well, depending on which Superman, yeah. But <laughs> Silver, just... Silver Age will say then. The yeah. overpowered Superman. Or, Cla- yeah. or, or just Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's Christopher people. Reeve who could turn back time. <laughs> <laughs> Superman it, was, it was a special effect. <laughs> yeah, so he can. But, so <laughs> he does have a Superman, yeah. right? Who at any point can be pretty much anywhere in the world. Yep. Uh, why does crime still exist in Superman's world? No, no, what Superman does is he goes and works a shitty daytime job at a newspaper and then cries at the North Pole. <sighs> he's like Santa Claus working for the sun. That's it's, who you worship and idolise. He is the epitome, the ideal the ideal of a hero. No, he's not. He is. He's not. He's if, a weapon for the American military. And he, does, he was invented himself. in a time to be an icon. For people. Yeah. For people to get behind against the Russians. But just he was Which is why I love Red Sun. Yeah. Because it flips that idea as yeah. I love Red Sun. But, but he is the epitome of, of good and what a hero should be. But he's also the epitome of America. And it's everything that America true. is. And it's thinking that you can police the world <laughs> it's, and actually it's never fighting a bold it. man who's in charge of the corporation. <laughs> yeah. It's just for me, like the thing with Batman, he has limitations because he's not got powers. He's yeah. human. He's and, using yeah. what he can to effect change in an area that affects him. Mm-hmm. With Superman, he could do whatever he wanted. 
and he just generally just waits for a giant robot to appear. And then he goes, oh, I better go and fight that. But it's not about that as well. That's why Superman is, a, is an icon. It's about changing the world through example and through being up for the sun yeah but he's he's <laughs> he's a symbol which is so is Rupert Murdoch but I just don't want to be like him but not a symbol for good he, he works for a trashy magazine doing basically political journalism yeah it's like, it's <laughs> like, it's like, like, I mean don't get me wrong if he was Ian Hislop <laughs> as Superman I'd be all over it but he's not it's it's just that whole kind of that very stroppy personality for someone who has got unlimited power is essentially a god among men. Yeah, and just spends most of his time just going, "Oh, uh, Norris, I was wondering if you'd like to come to play some darts with me." Oh, I've accidentally thrown the dart right through the wall and punctured <laughs> that hot air balloon. I'd better just go to the toilet. And he changes suit and flies up, patches up high and flies back. Oh. Apparently, Superman's been around. <laughs> oh, I was a particularly yeah. stubborn shit in this. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a very bizarre that did way. sound like British Superman. <laughs> it's, just, it's a very bizarre way for a, a superhero. Like, Batman isn't a hero. That's the thing. He yeah. does heroic things, but he's a vigilante. He's a criminal, yep. essentially. Uh, you've got... Oh, was that squeaky? That was my foot on the fridge, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I thought... That's the gas. That's the gas. That's the gas. That's the gas. just hit three thirds on the floor. <laughs> but, with, but with Superman, he's just... It works well when he is the bad guy. That's the thing. He's better when he goes up against Batman. When he gets stroppy or he yeah. loses his plot. The Batman versus Superman stuff is always the best. Because he's a villain, really. For me, he should be a villain. He's the biggest threat. The, the um, Injustice, Gods Among Us, the storyline yeah. to that, where Superman going through what the Joker yeah. puts him through. Yeah. Yeah. If that was a film, I'd be mm. all over it. And I did like Man of Steel. I very much like when because it, it wasn't called Superman. Because it wasn't Superman. Superman. <laughs> Again, he did he did work well with a slight villainy twist in the that amazing CG trailer for I think it was uh, DC Online, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. where yeah. Joker calls him down and yeah. with a red face and goes to do and Wonder Woman. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like is Superman true. isn't the best hero in the world. He's the biggest threat to the world, but also the biggest deterrent to the world. Yeah. But as I say, he just doesn't do enough. He could do more. If, That's what I'm saying. You could do more. If you put a pair of glasses on a dog, does Lois Lane think it's a different dog? No. So it's a terrible disguise. It is a terrible she's disguise. Not, she's not fooled with a dog, but she's fooled by Clark Kent. <laughs> well, what's that all about? Because she's an idiot. Uh, you put a bowler hat on the dog. <laughs> oh, two dogs. She's an investigative journalist. She doesn't she can't pay attention tell to anything. A pair of glasses. <laughs> oh, so yeah, well there we go. That's uh, that's enough comic book talk. We talked about games. We talked about comic books. Yeah. We talked about four in February. Uh, if yeah. you, obviously you want to. Um, Get involved, as we say before. Uh, tweet your four in February se- selections using the hashtag uh, for Feb to at we are with the letter R, the Lola Coast. Um Do feel free to rate us and review us on iTunes. We haven't had one this week. Oh, we had one just you. before the last episode. We haven't had one since. Okay. And I don't mind. I don't, I'm not going to beg for them. <laughs> um, but it is nice to know to get feedback more than anything it's nice to know it doesn't have to be positive reviews necessarily you can email us as well, well and say if you've say you're listening like this, we do like that. and you've only just heard this episode mm. and it's now been out for five weeks drop your review in based on this episode absolutely yeah. fine if you say oh half an hour was too much to talk about Superman mm. fair enough we will never talk about Superman again <laughs> um, <laughs> this is all playing to your hands really isn't it <laughs> uh, so yes yeah, so you can obviously Spread the word as well. If you've got friends that might be into gaming or newspapers or Billy Elliot, uh, tell them about our podcast. Because we game, talked about game miners. <laughs> game miners. That's more Billy, Billy Elliot again. You're just, <laughs> you're just jumping on my jokes now. You're riding me like a camel. Uh, <laughs> like a game miner. So, yeah. so you can <laughs> subscribe on iTunes, reviews on there. Uh, subscribe on Stitcher. You can't really review it on Stitcher, but... You know, feel free to share the links. And you can follow me at Bounce Woman HR for second B. You can follow Rob at, at Rob McGregor 35. And you can follow Mark at, at XBLA Silicon, C I W L A C A M. We'll, we'll get him to change that. <laughs> uh, if you want to send Shaq Fu to the shop, <laughs> uh, which is a good big yes there, um, wind the episode back. The address is there. I'm not going to say it again. Uh, we'll be back for episode six, which I'm thinking of calling Clickety Click Punching the Dick. 
But um, I don't know the sound of this. I don't. I'm not coming down to your basement again if that's the episode title. Oh, Christ. So what yeah, two tonight for a dick punch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, it's we'll go down to Cockfosters to record. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, so thanks for listening, and uh, we will see you all next week. Tatty, bye. Wave everybody. Bye. Keep waving. Keep, keep waving. We've got to keep waving until that hits one minute twenty-seven. That's another twenty. 34 seconds of waving. Don't you dare stop waving, Rob. Why? You were wrong about a felt tip yeah. question. Keep there, waving, Rob. Keep... There, yeah, that'll go. There we go. Yeah. No, it hasn't stopped, Rob! You <laughs> fell for the trick! <laughs> oh, you uh, bloody well, idiot. Uh, if I push this button, then we work ourselves around this.